Okay. Okay. Warning against judging others. As a little bit of an introduction, I already said uh, the main theme of the teaching is self-discipline. And this may not be one of the top highlights or your personal highlight. It's definitely not my personal highlight because it tells me about myself. It tells me what I can stoop to. It tells me what I can do. Even if I don't want to admit it, it tells me about that nature that is within that, that pops up, that is not of God, that, you know, that sinful nature that still lives within. And we got to discipline that nature. We have to uh, cast down that nature. But James tells us about that nature. And the title of today, this part of the teaching is warning against judging others. And you can turn in your Bibles to James chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. I will be reading James chapter 4, verse 11. First, the King James Version, and then the New Living Translation. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, to all, this is interactive. I will not mute everybody at this time, but if I see a microphone with background noise, I will mute you as an individual. And if it has to be, I will mute everybody. If I should do that, please, when you get ready to speak, unmute yourself. This is interactive. I do desire your questions and your comments. So if you should have one, a question, a comment, uh, please just say question or comment and I will address you at that time. This is interactive. This is a Bible study. And the more we apply ourselves, the more God will input in us. Okay. So with all of that said, King uh, James chapter four, verse 11, King James <laughs> version, then the New Living Translation. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Uh -huh. New Living Translation says that verse this way. Don't speak evil against each other. Dear brothers and sisters, he's speaking to Christians, people who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, people who have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. Mm -hmm. If you, you Christians, <laughs> criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job, is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. And that's what the world does. The world takes God and says, should, this, should I let this apply to me or should I not let it apply to me? But we who are Christians, we have no choice. By the very state of our statement, Lord, come into my heart and I will live for you. We are placing ourselves under God's complete guidelines on how to live, his law, his commands, his principles, his patterns to follow. So there is no option for us. There's an option for those in the world, and they're going to pay for having that option. They're going to die and go to hell, plain English. So what, what is James telling us here? James addresses pop, proper relationships between believers in the midst of improper relationship behavior. Now, you know we Christians can act, we can cut up, we can have uh, bad behavior amongst ourselves. I'm sure if I go around, everybody got a story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, Lord. <laughs> so, with, and, and that just goes to show that scripture is true, 
that scripture is there to guide us, mm -hmm. to help us, not to fall back into the way of the world, but to come in maturity and rise up to the level that God wants us to live by. That's why James is addressing these issues. Believers, you and I are to love God by being humble before him. Believers are to love our neighbor by refusing to speak evil. Hey, I had one neighbor who spoke evil of me and my wife and my the whole family. And I ain't going into it. But I'm just saying, I had a firsthand experience of this. And you know, I wanted to speak evil back. Mm. Humanism. But I'm a Christian. Yeah. I had to learn the self-discipline. Mm. I had to learn not to go, what, retribution for retaliation? Mm -hmm. No. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it took, it, it was hard. Sometimes with every fiber of your being, you just want to let go. Mm. But then what kind of what kind of witness are you being for Christ in that instance? <coughs> speaking evil can take the form take sorry speaking evil can take many forms. Now remember you're the one speaking the evil coming out of your mouth. Remember what James said the tongue is a it like it's like a fire it speaks mm. and fire and you can't put it out and once it's yeah. out it's gone. And all mm -hmm. its destruction. Okay. So speaking evil can take many forms. Number one, we may speak the truth about a person and still be unkind. You know, mm -hmm. listen, there's a difference. You can speak the truth, but you can just speak it just as evil as you can be. Yeah. Or you can speak it with just as loving kindness as you can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Speaking evil can take on many forms. The next one, number two, we may spread gossip that others have no business knowing. Mm. Mm. It ain't no business at work what's going on in at my neighbor's house across the street. Mm. Mm. It's no business of, of what's going on at work being spread to people, maybe in other departments at work. Now, you know we're itching to tell. Come on. And you know some of us got itchy ears to hear. Yeah. Mm. But the thing that divides us from this world is the, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And James is identifying this behavior. So if we're doing it, we know we got to correct it. If we got a problem because we love doing it, you know we got to work harder to get it corrected. Because otherwise you may start a fire that'll cause somebody to not want to have anything to do with Christ because they have identified you with Christ and you caused this chaos. Think about it. Another form. We may be questioning someone's authority. Hey, we do it all the time. I do it. Who are you to tell me what to do? Okay. But God has a structure. And I, I, I'm gonna put it right out there. In the world, you want that you want it, that mentality. You want to operate in that mentality. You're gonna go get another job because that boss gonna fire you. In the church, they can't fire you, okay? Because you, it's up to you on what church you want to go to. But God will step in and let you know that there is an order in His house. Mm -hmm. And you are to respect that authority if you want to be blessed by God. Yes. Now, if you want what the world is getting, go ahead and disrespect that authority. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and be as big and bad as you want to be and say mm -hmm. the things you feel you big and bad to say and you can do because nobody has the right to tell me what to do. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. See what you get. Uh -huh. Another form. Cancel out their good work by bad mouthing. Yes. Yes. What does that mean? Any one of you can go say something about Minister Panky to others mm. and cancel out the good that I am doing in the kingdom of God by yes. your bad mouthing. 
Mm -hmm. I don't think any one of us want to be caught there. Mm -hmm. But yet, we have a tendency to do that. And this is where we got to really discipline ourselves. Okay? This hurts. I think that we're not even aware sometimes that, that, that you're speaking evil of somebody. I mean, you don't sit up to I'm going to say about certain things. Like sometimes I'll share what's going on with somebody and it's really not my business. And the person didn't ask me to share it, but I'm sharing it with somebody else under pretense of being concerned. You yes. Know? Um, and a lot of, that's what's difficult about this to me is to really go back to what your, what is your motivation in the first place? Why are you saying this? And what does this have to do with you? You know? Yes. Thank you, Sister Janice. Good point. Sometimes we do say things honestly, but then check your motivation. Are, are you saying it because you just like that feeling of, oh, I know something and I can share, but then the other person may be receiving it just for evil motivation rather than yeah. taking it to God and praying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some yeah. things are yeah. innocent enough, mm -hmm. but then we gotta learn to do retrospect during the course of the day. We have to learn how to uh, analyze our motivation. And, and Minister Panky, if I uh -huh. could just jump in, you mm -hmm. know, as you had talked about in James where it talks about the tongue can set the, the whole forest of fire. The thing we need to realize is that yes, you may be speaking the truth, but you have to think about the ramification for that person you know, the long-term impact it's gonna have on that person. Because sometimes we can hurt someone so deeply in speaking the truth and, and that relationship can never ever be mended again. Yes. So all of those things we really need to think before we speak and say <coughs> things, especially to others. And, and you know, I know this was addressing those in the kingdom. So you could imagine having mm. this issue in the kingdom, what about in the world? Mm. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, and listen, go ahead. Yeah, and, and not to cut you off, but um, I, I think in Proverbs it mentions some of the things that that that, that God hates, and yes. um, even even as as Minister Sober has mentioned, um, yeah, you may be speaking the truth, but it's it, it's it's gossip, and and and. By you spreading spreading that gossip, you're basically allowing dissension. You 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 you're stirring the pot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And 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 God speaks about that in the book of Proverbs. That's that's one of the things that 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 He hates. Not not just mm -hmm. dislikes. He hates it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, and <laughs> all of the, the statements that you everyone is bringing out. Thank you for that because you're bringing in a greater depth then mm -hmm. I, in writing up the lesson, uh, didn't think of it, didn't go there. But as was so, we in Christ, we've seen this. We may have experienced this. Mm -hmm. But how much more in the world is this who has no guidance to stop it? Mm -hmm. And we are not of this world, so why are we acting like we are in the world? Mm -hmm. Minister Pankey, I'm sorry, I just have to no, say No, you're not. Thing. Go ahead, Mrs. Sobers. Go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is that, you know, for a week of Christians, and I'm not considering myself strong in any way, I'm, I'm trying my best, but we can actually push people out of the kingdom. Yes. If we're doing this to people who are in the kingdom, there are people who are, are struggling, you know, with all the issues of life. And if you do these kind, if you can't control yourself when it comes to that, you can actually be that stumbling block. And the Bible talks about not being that stumbling block. Absolutely. Minister and, and go ahead. Um, maybe I'm mis misreading it, but I thought we were speaking about those uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, he's, We're not he's, talking about the world so much. So I'm thinking back about the Lord, what he said. You don't judge each other, but use the same standard that you would want to be judged to judge others. But we're talking about, he was talking about 
us as Christians in Matthew, he's he's saying don't judge each other. But if you are going to judge, you treat you treat others as you would want to be treated. So in your standard for judging, use the same standard for yourself. Because if you did that, that little speck you see in your friend's eye, um, when you have a log in your own eye. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, we so, just took this to a whole nother level. So Sorry, Sister Barbara, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. So when we're saying don't speak evil against each other, brothers, their brothers and sisters, I didn't think we were, that was pertaining to us in the church. Uh, okay, but it is. It is. It is. It's mm -hmm. pertaining. In other words, I should not be talking about Minister Sobers in an evil right. manner. Yes. Okay. Um, and just to, since we started going there about judging, um, the word judge here, form an opinion or conclusion about, mm. okay? You cannot form, an, well, you, let, me, let me put it to you this way. You as a human being, we like to form opinions. Right. You as a human being like to uh, have conclusions. And you have a tendency to form opinions and conclusions about people who are not correct opinions or conclusions. Yeah. And by you having those opinions or conclusions could be causing division in the body of Jesus Christ. That's what we're specifically talking about. Right. Okay. So Only this, God, go ahead. See, God can judge the heart we're not allowed to we can't do that because we, we don't know no. right we, can, we might want to say well we could judge the actions but we don't know what's behind absolutely yeah. and that's why we got to be careful of that exactly okay? yeah. and yeah. that's why that's why james is addressing this issue mm -hmm. this was an issue in the early church this is listen let me put it to this way as long as they're human beings in the church yeah. Yeah. You will have this issue in the church. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we do it right out boldly on purpose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do it um, not knowing. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, we do it. Exactly. Okay. And here's the reason why James is addressing this issue. This hurts the harmony among believers. Believers, yes. Amen. Now, if we're a believer and Minister Pike is a believer and I'm a believer, why am I going to hurt my brother? Why am I going to talk bad about him? It must either something, something got to be wrong with me. That I refuse to flow in the spirit of God to edify my brother. I hear a lot of background somewhere. I refuse to flow in Jesus. Listen, Jesus, I, I thought about this. Jesus told it as it is. Mm -hmm. He told it for the purpose of correction. Yes. And those people that I thought Jesus would surely lay out, he answered them in love and kindness. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we are to do the same. Mm -hmm. Here, here, here's just a thought that came in. God help the person who hurts the body of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Look at that. And I say that to go back to, I forgot who made the statement. We could be turning younger Christians off to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can talk of personal experience because I've been turned off by senior people in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was not good mm -hmm. you have to be conscious of it because a lot of times people who are observing you are not always who you think mm -hmm. you know you'll be conscious of some people and then another time someone will come to you and say oh I remember when you did such and such and I was impressed because and you never even knew this person even knew your name mm -hmm. and yes. I think also <laughs> also when we go out into the world, I think it expands because our conversation 
in the world, we may be blocking somebody from coming into the body of Christ because they don't want to be involved with all of the gossip and, and yes. talk that we have. True. Yeah. I, I know a song. Well, you may not know the group, but it, the name of the group is DC Talk. And they're like a rock Christian. Very good group. At least I think so. And one of their songs, the greatest thing against the world coming and being Christians is other Christians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And that's a sad but true fact. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a fact that we should acknowledge and apply scripture to stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, Minister Pankey, I believe it was Buddha who said he wished he had <laughs> met Christ before <laughs> meeting the Christians. And that is a statement in itself that, yeah. you know, if we actually behave like a Christ, mm -hmm. um, you know, people would actually come into the kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come in, last I'm sorry, go ahead, Minister. Mr. Come in, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm in, in the true sense of it, you know, um, as we went through the series uh, and you speak about the tongue, the, 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 the poison that is in this tongue, it is the tongue, in other words, if you say nothing, no one can accuse you of gossip. Yes. Mm -hmm. so if you true. do it in your mind, only God knows. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. But the point I try to um, I want to make here is that once you're in this flesh, you have to be always conscious yes. of yeah. what the word of God entails. Because someone might bring a gossip to you, something, and then you become a partaker of that gossip unconsciously. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not even consciously understanding that you, 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 you are determined by the teachings that you are getting today not to be a part of such things. Mm. And yet, yes. you join in just like, <laughs> and then say, boy, I knew that I knew that guy, man, he was no good at any at all. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. And by the time you realize what has happened, your name could be gone out to say, but if I think the same way I think it. You were saying this, this, and that, and your name go to two, three people. So mm -hmm. that's why the word of God and, 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 and seek for us to walk in the spirit. Yeah. That we yeah. might fulfill the, 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 these the things. The the yeah. Yes. yes I was apparently. remembering the scripture that says, out of the heart, the mouth, out of the, out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. Okay. Right. Deaconess Pike, you had something to say? Yeah. Yeah, I was saying that I was just going to have to be saying that this because of um, carnality of some of the believers, mm. this some is us. where, yes, some of, well, I mean, some, some of, of us, not all of us, because mm -hmm. when you're carnal, you cannot see straight. Great. Mm -hmm. Yes. We need to see that light. And mm. when somebody comes to us with something, about our brother or sister, we ought not to, I mean, be a partaker of it. We ought to quash it right there and, and pray with our brother that is in, because he said, if you, those that are weak, you yep. are to help strengthen them. So maybe this gossip is a weak brother or sister, you know? <laughs> and so we just can't just throw them off, but we have to try to build them up to yeah. show them the lights. Yes, I absolutely. What I'm saying. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Just the last point on this slide. We got to understand this, this fact of why James is addressing this. People, Christians, people who had the spirit of God living within them, or maybe they just named themselves, identified as Christians. Either way, these people, were in the practice, not just one time here, they were practice mm -hmm. of criticizing, disapproving one another. Mm -hmm. Imagine that say the people were in the practice of criticizing. You know, you can get such a critical spirit. 
Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You can operate with such a criticizing spirit that mm -hmm. whatever comes out of your mouth is criticism, disapproval, uh, and mm -hmm. you just doing uh, it off a of reaction because you operate uh, out of that spirit so much. You became it, it became your rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It Maybe. became your program, computer mm -hmm. terms. Yes, sir. And we got to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing is right. Mm -hmm. Nothing with the kids, growing kids, children, raising them. Nothing is approved of. Oh, Jesus. Thank okay. You. And imagine where the destruction mm -hmm. that comes about. Mm -hmm. A little bit more, uh, mm -hmm. verse 11. The specific problem being confronted violates the ninth commandment. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor, which is mm -hmm. Exodus 20, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you, you, you think you may be helping, but you're really destroying. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you intend to, just, oh, I'm going to get back at that person. I'm going to spread their business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next point, it also violates the more essential law of Christ. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 22, verse 39. And also, see also Leviticus verse uh, chapter 19, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love your neighbor as, and, and a little while a statement was made. Walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. That is how, okay. go ahead. You know, and I think that is also the point that Sister Barbara was bringing out. But the problem, here is where the problem is. That, you know, when we talk about loving our neighbors like ourselves, we don't hold ourselves to the same standard as our neighbors. And and, and I'm talking about our neighbors in the church or neighbors' neighbors. Or mm -hmm. We don't hold ourselves to the same standard. We don't really um, um, embrace our, our, our shortcomings and say, you know what, this is sin, because we still try to grade it. Okay, the neighbor is absolutely horrible because they killed somebody. I never killed anybody. But you're still sinning. You're sinning in your thoughts. You're cursing people out in your head. You're doing all that kind of stuff. And that is where the problem lies. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Right. And, and Minister Sobers, I like what you said. You're doing it within you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we, we, we're talking, well, we started off talking about the manifestation, mm -hmm. but now let's move on to the inside of you. That's right. right? Let's move on to what's going on in your mind. Let's move on to what's going on in your heart, mm -hmm. even though you know better than to express it. And you know, God is even concerned all the more about what is within us. He's concerned about our thoughts. Are they righteous or unrighteous? He's concerned about our heart. Is it righteous or unrighteous? And we and we got to be careful. You know, we have to uh, discipline our lives to the point. Never mind about the listen. The manifestation comes about from what's within. So yeah. where we got to do the discipline is with what's within us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're setting ourselves up for a heck of a battle because some of it I love to do. Some of it I want to do because I want to make you hurt as much as I hurt. Some of it I want to do because I want revenge because you did this to me and I want you to pay. But if you operate in that spirit and you start practicing it, you're only setting yourselves up for destruction. And God does not want us to be destroyed. So he sends James and other scriptures to correct Amen. what is within us. Because mm. if it ain't in you, it can't come out of you. That's right. You stop eating and drinking, nothing can come out. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. Go ahead. So, so, so can we say it is critical as Christians um, it is important for us to, to search our own heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. daily. Yeah. Daily. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Corey. It's so true. And I would say do it daily 
and have some reflective time on how you behave during the course. Now, listen, I'm going to be the first one. Into, I don't do this. But I will also be the one, now that this is being taught, I will strive to put it in because there's one thing that's becoming real critical. And I don't mean bad language, but I mean mm -hmm. real critical is this world needs people who will reflect Christ for who Christ is. Yes. Yeah. And that's the only way the power is going to come out through us to them. And we can't reflect who, who true Christ is by doing all this nonsense. Mm. <clears throat> it's like um, your stove. Your stove on certain burners is supposed to put out certain uh, BTUs to cook properly. Okay, you put some nonsense there, it can't heat up that food properly because there's a blockage. Therefore, your food won't taste. I don't know why these greens didn't come out this way good today. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there was something else there blocking the flame from cooking it properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so the same thing with us. We got to get all of this garbage under the discipline of God. That not only does it not manif manifest itself, but it doesn't dwell within us. Yes. So that we can right. be a true reflection because this world needs Christ. And the only way this world is going to get Christ is through you and me. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. It. Amen. Yes, sir. Next point. When we judge one another in this slanderous way, false way mm -hmm. we are clearly failing to submit to god you know what we're doing yes. we're putting ourselves on god's level and mm -hmm. we know what god says but we're put because god i can do whatever i want when i want if i want to talk about so and so i'm going to talk about so and so even though i know your word tells me different mm -hmm. this is what you just did that's dangerous very yeah. dangerous any questions or comments about verse 11? We're moving on to verse 12. Okay, if there be none. Verse 12, King James Version, chapter 4, verse 12. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. King James Version first, then the New Living Translation. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? New Living Translation. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. Mm -hmm. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say this much. We're not to judge person's motives. We're not to judge a person if they're in Christ, out of Christ. We're not to judge uh, any of that. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we are to judge, because of what we see, if we're going to be close to that person or stay away from that person. <clears throat> and the way we're to do that is according to scripture. Is if that I'm reading, I just finished Proverbs. I'm in the book of Ecclesiastes, personal study. And it tells you, you do not want to join up with a self-centered person. Mm -hmm. It tells you straight out, don't hook up with no foolish people. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. It tells you straight out what good people to be with and bad people to be with. Amen. So you better make a judgment on that call. Amen. But you are not to go into any other parts of judging. Am I clear on that point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I've heard, you know, don't judge at least you be judged. There are some things I got to judge. If right. I'm going to be a, now, I God may use me to speak to that person, but in that is wisdom. Yes. Yeah. Because then you can become just like the fool. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Come in, Mr. Panky. Yes, sir, Minister. Well, evil, evil, com evil communication corrupt good manners. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we, you want to, as a Christian, you know, there are so many aspects to our Christian life. Mm. 
there is so much hitting us as Christians. And the only thing I can say is, thank God, God don't deal with it all at the same time. Mm. But we have to learn. He brings us in and out of different seasons. And when you're in that season, learn that lesson well, that you do not have to return to that season. Yes. All right. Some notes on verse 12. God alone is both the source and the enforcer of the law. Mm -hmm. Amen. Believers are accountable to God's law and cannot place ourselves in God's place. I've been guilty of that one. I ain't accountable to God, but I place myself in God's space and I put forth my judgment no matter what was going on. This is what I thought. This is what I felt. This is how it's going to be with no consideration of God. Mm -hmm. So, so Minister Planky, you're you're saying that um, I can't do something and then just say, "God, just bless it," because I did it. Correct. <laughs> that, that's kind of you're placing yourself as God, and then you're asking the God to bless it. It may not be of His will. But you know, it's of your will because you wanted it done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Next point. God rewards those who obey the law and destroys those who disobey. Mm. It's the same God who blesses, destroys. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Your actions. No, but back up one step. Your decisions mm. will put into place if God is going to bless you or possibly cause things to curse you, mm. you decide. You want to know something? Here, here's the bottom line. We are accountable to God, but are you living a life of accountability? Mm. Uh -huh. And what I mean by that, we're accountable, but are we holding ourselves accountable? Mm. Or are we just doing whatever flies? Mm. And there's some verses. I, I wish I could read them, but I can't. I'm just going to read the verses. Deuteronomy, uh, the scripture where it's found, Deuteronomy 32, 39, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6, Psalm 68, verse 20, and Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. I wish we had time to read it, but we don't. So uh, moving on. James also takes away any rights we might claim for criticizing our neighbors. You know, sometimes we Christians can be holy and righteous mm -hmm. in ourselves mm -hmm. and then take and then claim, oh, I have the right to do this. Mm -hmm. You got uh -huh. the right to destroy somebody? Mm -mm. Come on. No. no. That... Minister Panky. Go ahead. So, you know, here again is, uh, and I, I always have some issue with, with this part of it, because we tend to remember other people's past and, mm. and, and not our own past. And I, I have to give you a classic example. And this happened only on Sunday um, with, with my sister who was saved. Um, but there is a, a young woman who grew up with us who had a very questionable, I mean, questionable past. And she is now a pastor. So my sister is showing me this young woman on Facebook and she's preaching and my sister's like, hmm, I don't believe any of that. I said, how can you judge her and you can't judge yourself? Right. You wasn't walking with God. You got saved a couple of years ago. What are you talking about? Why can't she be saved and, and doing the right thing? So, you know, sometimes, you know, we just continue to remember people's yeah. past and we don't yeah. remember our own yes true. True. yeah true and yes. we let that past dominate our today mm. yes. yes 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 next point beyond the critical spirit is an attitude that takes god's authority and is full of pride mm. so this is what we got to be on god we got to be on god of a critical spirit 
Mm. that takes on the attitude of God's authority. In other words, in your attitudes, you're not accountable to God. You making yourself to be God. Mm. Yeah. And you're really full of pride. And you got to be careful of that because it is very easy to go down this road of self uh, illusion. Mm. Self righteousness. Self righteous. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you Julie. Mm. And, and listen, remember this fact he's not talking about the world, for we expect this of the world. Yeah. But he's speaking to people who have a relationship with God. I can't stress that enough. There should be no critical, harsh, mm -hmm. fault finding in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I know firsthand, not from the body of Christ, thankfully, but from my job, work, environment, I'm criticized up and down. I got people saying things about me that don't even exist within <laughs> me, but yet this is their opinion and that's what they're holding and it's fault finding. Mm -hmm. So I know what that spirit looks like and how it operates mm -hmm. and it's not good for mm -hmm. anyone. Mm -hmm. And that, but here's the thing that's in the world. Most of the people I work with are members of the world who have mm. not known Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mm. So you kind of, you should expect it mm. because they don't, they don't have any teaching to know better except the moral better. side. Mm. Okay. Mm. The principle in this verse does not prohibit the proper. Now here, you got to listen to this one. The principle in this verse does not prohibit the proper action of a church against a member who is acting in obvious disobedience to God. In other words, there's something really going on. There's an event, there's people talking, whatever's going on. We still have a responsibility to get in there and correct it, but there's a certain Amen. way it's supposed to be done. This Amen. is not a blanket statement that you can allow chaos to happen in your church. That's right. This is not a blanket statement to allow chaos to go with the, on within us just because it's not being manifested. Okay? I told you, this one's an ouch lesson. Mm -hmm. When it comes yeah. down to James's concern with the critical speech that condemns or judges others or judges others' actions and their standing with God. James is confronting individuals who might be tempted to set themselves up as personal watchdogs on other believers. Mm. You ever have somebody just be a yeah. watchdog over your salvation? Oh, Lord. Mm. Church police. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Nobody has the right to do that. Nobody. Mm -hmm. nobody should be doing it because nobody is God. It's God. And whatever God is going to tell. One thing I heard years ago. Mm -hmm. If you get a message from somebody, God is such God that he, it, it's like a, a confirming message. Mm -hmm. In other words, somehow, somewhere, God would have given you the message and then confirmed it. Or if he gives you the message from somebody, he later confirms it. God is always confirming. Mm -hmm. But if you get the message from somebody and there's no confirmation, mm -hmm. and it's just because they're the, you're the spirit police, mm -hmm. be yeah. careful. And this does happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm telling you something that is in, in um, conflict with the word. Yes, you know, absolutely. But sometimes when people get in there, put on their God hat, they they tell me what they think you ought to be doing, and all the, and it's based on them and what they think, and not on what the word says. And God didn't send them to you, you know, and gently, nicely, but you gotta put them to the side. Yes, mm. and and you know we have to. God is giving us the roadmap of maturity. Yes, mm -hmm. and as we accept this roadmap, roadmap and become mature, God will start speaking to us. 
and he'll start positioning and dealing with us and revealing exactly what that spirit is. But if we don't take the time to sit down and spend time with God, he ain't going to spend time with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll go silent. <laughs> yeah, he'll, yeah. yeah, he'll go ghost on you. Yeah, he'll go yeah. ghost on you. <laughs> really? So, there, there concludes today's lesson. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, yes, Lord. Thank a warning you. against judging. Yes, yes. sir. Okay. And, and it had a lot to do with it. There was a lot in there. So, Amen. I, I pray that your your spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ will be edified from these teachings from the book of James. Amen. So, any questions or comments? We got to wrap up. It's 12 o'clock. Thank you. And very good. Thank you. Sir. I will stop sharing for a minute. And I just want to share one more thing with you. Okay. Everybody said, warning against self-confidence. Mm -hmm. James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. That's next week's lesson. Yes. <coughs> warning against self-confidence. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I will.